Hi, welcome to the latest in this series of videos about Irish ancestors. Um, in this particular one, I'm going to be talking about uh, a feature of the site that I haven't mentioned before. And when I get into the details of it, you'll understand why I haven't mentioned it before. Let's, let's go to the site and start now. Right, here we are at the site. What I'm going to talk about is this thing here, the wizard. There we are. The wizard is uh, an attempt to automate the process of looking at what somebody knows and telling them where to go, what research to do, and so on. Um, the easiest way to demonstrate it is to start. Okay, it's a step-by-step -step process, um, doing something very similar to what the Ancestors Report does, except that this is a lot more flexible. Um, agile, I believe, is the, the, the tech buzzword. Um, so it, depending on what you, you put in here, you'll be asked another question. Depending on your answer to that, you'll be asked another question, so on and so forth. Um, let me just demonstrate. It, it's designed really uh, uh, to kickstart research. It's not designed as a, the complete solution to all your research problems. Um, unfortunately, there is no such panacea. Or one of, Fortunately or unfortunately, one of the joys of genealogy is that um, no one size fits all. Everything is handmade. Anyway, let me just start off and show you um, what it can't do. Okay, this is not standard. This is not um, marketing 101. So John Moriarty, born in Ireland, 1740. Um, gender female. The reason for asking this, and this is, I realize this is um, highly suspect these days. The reason for asking it is just that the information you put in is reflected back at you at each stage and his or her, I need to need to know what, what the gender is to use the pronoun. So do you know his religion? Yes, okay, next you get a, a list of religions. So he, John Moriarty was Church of Ireland. Do I know the names, names of either his parents? No, I don't. Was he married in Ireland? I don't think so. Were any of his children born outside of Ireland? Yes. Do I know their names? Okay, there's a Michael. Let's see. There's a Michael born. Michael born, say, 1780. Okay, you can see along the top, the information you've put in is reflected there. So he didn't marry an He had Michael in 1780. Do I know where he was born? If you click yes, he'll be given place name options, but I don't know where he was born. I don't know what occupation he had in Ireland. I don't know anything about his brothers and sisters. Did he emigrate? Yes, but I don't know anything about where. Did he die in Ireland? No. Any other relevant information? Nothing. So your ancestor was born into the Church of Ireland in Ireland in about 1740. He didn't marry in Ireland. He had Michael in Ireland. The reason for repeating all of this at the top of the, the page is just to make clear what's um, what you've actually put in. OK, also, it means I can carry the information forward and come to this. OK. Um, so uh, you should keep in mind that there are at least nine versions of the Moriarty surname, and it gives all nine of them. And records of John may be listed under any or of all. However, Gaelic spellings are very rare in records before 1900. So Omera Hertig is unlikely to be the, the one you're looking for. Um, this is the, the, the relevant Irish records before the mid 1700s are notoriously poor. And your chances of finding out more about John Moriarty are pretty slim. This, that is a euphemism for saying, maybe you should think about finding another hobby. Anyway, um, have a look at the numbers and locations of, of Moriarty in the mid 19th century and see if any of the place names are familiar from family tradition. So if you look and you can see all the Moriarty's are there in the, this is the 1850s, but I would bet you that's where they were in the 1740s as well. Um, OK, even without even a general place of origin, so we didn't put in a place, it would be next nigh impossible to identify the right family. Before the start of births, marriages and deaths, parish records are virtually the only uh, direct sources of family events. Um, OK, you can again, you can do this and click through and see um, what Church of Ireland records there are, for example, let's see, where's the, the biggest, there we are, there's that area in Cologlin. Were there Church of Ireland records? I don't think so. Church of Ireland, Cologlin, 
okay, held by the Public Record Office in 1919. Um, there are some online then, okay, on the, the, the church records. So there are some Calorglin records, but only from 1802. So nothing from the, the period we're interested in. So again, it, this is slim pickings, as the as the, the saying goes. All right, so that, that's the first thing. The, the, the thing is designed really for the vast majority of people whose ancestors were Catholic small tenant farmers who left Ireland in the mid 19th century or the late 19th century. So let, let's go back and um, redo it with those entries. I'm gonna continue using John Moriarty because it can get too, um, too distracting uh, to, to have all the, the various um, uh, various surname bit things thrown up at you. So let's see, he was born in 1830. That's, he was male. What religion was he? He was Catholic. Do I know the names of either of his parents? Again, let's try something typical. His father was Michael. Um, I don't know his mother's maiden name. Was he married in Ireland? No. Do I, were his he was children born outside Ireland? Yes. There was a Michael and a Mary. Um, again, do you know where he was born? Yes, let's show you what happened when you did. Okay, you get an option to pick a county, first of all. Um, so we pick Kerry. Do I know anything more, more specific? Mm, no, okay. So we just go on with Kerry. I don't know his occupation. Again, you'll see the information up here is all different now. He was born Roman Catholic in Kerry in Ireland in about 1830. You're not sure where exactly in Kerry he was from because he only knows the county. He didn't marry in Ireland. He had Michael and Mary. Okay, I don't know anything about his brothers and sisters. I don't want to get put in immigration information, any other relevant information. And first of all, again, you see, because the surname is the same, the surname information you get back is the same. Before the start of state registration of births, marriages, and deaths in 1864, parish registers are virtually the only direct sources of family events. Because you only know John Moriarty's county of origin, you'll have to comb through the Roman Catholic records of Kerry. You can see a full parish by parish list of Roman Catholic records with dates covered and locations by clicking here. And that takes you to the site's listing of um, church records, and there are all the Catholic records. And you can see, you can go through them one by one, or um, John Moriarty's baptism is the record to aim for, okay, because you know his father's name. Almost all pre-1880 Catholic records have been digitised. The most comprehensive and accurate transcripts are at the website Roots Ireland. Most of what's missing there is available for free at Irish Genealogy. Ancestry and Find My Past have transcripts to, of the National Library Parish Register microfilms, which includes some areas, Cork City, Fermanagh and Wexford in particular, not covered elsewhere. The quality of the transcripts can be doubtful. When searching, be sure to allow wide variations in dates and names and search under both baptisms and marriages. You can see um, some of this is, is standard boilerplate um, adapted to the particular circumstances of this, this man, John Moriarty. So uh, what I'm trying to reproduce here is what I call trigger dates, okay? Anybody who's been doing Irish genealogy for a while has these in their, you know, carved into their brains, burnt into their souls. 1864, the start of all births, marriages and deaths, okay? 1901, 1911, the first comprehensive um, uh, uh, census returns. Um, 1858, the start of the state registration of wills, probate. So those kind of things. So what, what the thing does, aims to do, is to apply those trigger dates with a bit more, not just giving you a list, as happens with the ancestors report, but with uh, um, direct links to the relevant sources and advice about which are good and which aren't, um, about which are have missing things and which don't. So it's it's uh, uh, the thing attempts to be discursive. Okay, let's try... John Moriarty with different records, different circumstances, I mean. So John, again, John Moriarty, year of birth, this time we'll say um, 1870. Uh, male, and he was Catholic, of course. 
And we don't know the names of either of his parents. But yes, he did marry in Ireland. And his wife's name was Mary Mackey. Where, and he was children born in Ireland, yes. So his first child, Michael. And his second child, Mary. Again, you can see at the top what, what you've entered is being reproduced so you can keep an eye on that to make sure it's accurate. So he was born Roman Catholic in Ireland in about 1870. He married Mary Mackey in Ireland. Do you not sure when? Because you haven't entered a place name, so there's nothing about a county. Do you know where in Ireland he was born? No, I don't. I don't know his occupation. I don't know his brothers and sisters. I don't know about immigration. Blah, blah. Okay. And you can see this, this again, the surname is the same. So this depends on, on what I have in the, the surname records. So John Moriarty or some of his family, that's an important point. It might be a father or a sibling from the information you've entered that were in Ireland for a civil registration event. And the good news is that full PDF records of all registered births 1864 to 1920, marriages from 1845 and 1864 for, for Catholic marriages, and deaths from 1871 to 69 are freely available at Irish Genealogy. Again, there's a link. There's some advice about, um, because his birth is before 1882, um, there is a full transcript of, the, the not a full transcript, a partial transcript, but it includes um, father's name and mother's maiden name on familysearch.org, and that will take you to directly to the, the relevant part of family search. Again, it should be possible to pick out his birth, which should provide more precise information on the place of origin. Again, it, it goes back into the before 1880, the, the um, before 1864 rather, um, you can get back into the, the baptisms as well. So, and it gives you advice on the pre-1880 records. Again, the most comprehensive and accurate transcripts are at Roots Ireland. So again, um, and here you are to try and narrow the area you're searching. It might be a good uh, idea to check which parishes both recorded both Moriarty and Mackey households in the mid 19th century. Click here to see a list. And there you are, Moriarty and Mackey. There's not very many of them. So again, that's, that's circumstantial. Again, what I'm trying to do is reproduce the... Um, what I would be telling somebody if they gave me this information and said, where should I go and what should I do? Where should I go to start and what should I do? What you do next depends on what you find or what you don't find. Um, so it's, it's as I say, this is only an attempt to kickstart. It, this is not by no means a full solution. Um, if you're interested in more about this, there's, there's a, the, the latest blog post. If you click up on the blog here, um, should take you uh, to uh, some of the the, the um, inside the dirty inside secrets um, of the the wizard. Um, I hope it might be of some use to you. And um, thank you very much for watching.